Tisztelt hölgyeim és uraim! Distinguished ladies and gentlemen, uh, dear audience, it's a great honor to us that you have accepted our invitation. I convey my special welcome to Dr. Andras Cserpalkovic, member of Székesfehérvá and the representatives of Fair County General Assembly and the government office and the city municipality present here. Uh, a representation of the local businesses, companies, educational institutes, and non-governmental organizations, and special welcome must be expressed to teachers, teaching, and students studying environmental consciousness and awareness. I also welcome all the professionals and persons who are following our conference online, locally and in our Twin Cities. Climate change is one of the greatest environmental risks which has an effect not only on the economy but also on the life conditions and lifestyle of the population. Reduction of the effects of climate change can only be achieved by global cooperation. Therefore, we deem it of utmost importance that we discuss our good practices with our partners, with representatives of our twin cities, and to present our new climate strategy. We promoted our climate conference as an element of shaping attitudes and paradigm shift with the involvement of our international partners. Our goal is that with the help of experts, we receive information about areas where sustainable results have been achieved in Székesfehérvár and, and its twin cities, and also about the local challenges along the path of creating a greener and more livable cities. In the first half of the conference, Laszlo Magyar, representing the Energy Club, Policy Institute and Methodology Center, will deliver a presentation about the completed climate strategy of Székesfehérvár, city with county rights here in the conference hall. Then Thomas Lanisek, head of the project office for the development of smart city municipality of Krány, will deliver a presentation entitled Green City Solutions in the Light of Climate Change Online. This will be followed by a presentation from a town twin city in Finland, Kemi, Eija Kinunen, Sustainability Coordinator of Kemi, Project Manager for the Project for Green and Sustainable Companies in Kemi, will deliver a presentation entitled The Results of Applying Green and Sustainability Standards in Kemi. Then Agnes Lipce, landscape architect and uh, horticultural engineer, urban planner, uh, quality management engineer, will head the presentation uh, entitled Green City. Uh, then a short coffee break will follow, then we shall continue with the second part of our conference, I shall detail later. You can listen to our conference in English and in Hungarian with the help of simultaneous interpreters. I'd like to thank them for their services. Distinguished participants, before we before we hand it over to uh, representatives of and professionals, I'd like to request, kindly request, that our mayor delivers his address. May I also uh, express my, my, my welcome to everyone and professionals and young people here. And uh, it's, it's a great honor that our vice mayor is with us too. And I'd also like to convey my welcome to those who are not visible here, but they can see us. This is a great international conference within the framework of which we are going to touch upon very uh, relevant issues. When we prepared for this conference and when we talk about these topics, it's really very important for us to take a look at our past, because some years ago, uh, cities with county rights, there are 25 of such cities in, in Hungary, and these are towns who are uh, the biggest in this country after Budapest, and we decided to join an initiative and we undertake some tasks and responsibilities that uh, that come from uh, international agreements. And one of these elements is that we have to elaborate a climate strategy 
uh, in a comparable manner, and we have the end. Of course, there's a status assessment, and we have to determine various interventions where we have to, where we must take steps. Uh, these plans are for the period until 2030 and 2050. And these uh, issues will remain with us, and no matter what party or political party we uh, support, we have to come to an agreement with these very issues. So it's really important that the representative of the Energy Club is here too, and then we are socializing this process now, and we are uh, devoting this conference to this. Uh, and the aim of this conference is uh, that we take it really very important to take over international good practices and transfer international good practices because uh, uh, in this initiative, of course, a lot of different cities, a lot of different towns to participate. And we are all different, but we can take over best practices, and uh, especially from those cities who are a step ahead of us. And this conference uh, will create an opportunity for this now, and it's also important to, to stress that this is a professional conference, and this is a consultation which, of course, touches upon very important topics. And it's always worth mentioning that this is an issue that we have to think in globe that we have to think globally and act locally and we need coordination cooperation uh, among municipalities representatives of various industries and ngos too and i'd like to welcome the representatives too who've been really very active for long decades in uh, developing a strategy and I wish you a very fruitful conference and but obviously I'd expect a, a substantial action to follow the consultation thank you very much for your attention ladies and gentlemen guests we thank mayor for the introductory May I invite Laszlo Magyar from Energia Club to hold his presentation. Szeretettel köszöntök én is mindenkit itt a mai napon. May I greet you today. As May mentioned, this is a long-term planning process, a part of which uh, will be open for the public today, uh, planning the climate strategy uh, started uh, in cooperation with the local municipality last year, and we are finalizing the document which will set out uh, the directions, actions, and measures for the upcoming 10 years. It is very important that uh, global action and global planning are not sufficient any longer. It is required that we also act locally and respond to climate change and its effects. Uh, many company, many uh, uh, settlements uh, come up with climate strategies or action plans or both uh, in order to outline and determine these objectives and directions. Uh, the past decade uh, showed typical symptoms in Hungary and in Székesfehérvár, namely there was a failure to curb uh, emission of greenhouse gases. So we need a major change. We need to approach the problem uh, of climate change in a different manner because this is a pressing age of change. IPCC, the international uh, body responsible for climate change uh, outlines a very gloomy future. Uh, the chance uh, for keeping climate change within the bound uh, and render climate change manageable uh, 
has reduced to 50 percent, 50 percent compared to a previous report drafted six years ago. And this uh, signals that we are at the very last moment in the very la last year for uh, managing the uh, problem. Our climate change strategy does not only address uh, what uh, uh, we can do, it also describes how a settlement can resiliently adapt to uh, changes such as extreme temperatures, uh, extreme precipitation, draft. Responding to these uh, uh, is a major cornerstone of our uh, strategy. The data we processed for Sekeshvervar in our preparation showed that emissions uh, were higher than uh, um, the um, European average or the Hungarian average, uh, which um, is a result of uh, the major industrial operations and the service operations present in Sekeshvervar, and that demands um, major reductions. A strategy normally involves a vision which we uh, formulated in cooperation with uh, the leadership of the city. The city of Sikeshvair wants to ensure high quality built and natural environment for future generations so that the city operations uses little energy and produces uh, little greenhouse gas emissions as possible and the municipality is able to react flexibly to the challenges of climate change. Namely, we need to maintain our values, preserve our values. We need to motivate uh, to reduce uh, um, energy consumption and GHG emissions uh, and uh, respond to the challenges of climate change. This vision will be supported by uh, uh, overarching objectives. Uh, Uh, you may see some unfamiliar words such as mitigation and adaptation. Mitigation means curbing, uh, uh, limiting, restricting greenhouse emissions. All actions driven to reduce the burden on the atmosphere by uh, industry and uh, the residential sector. Adaptation means accommodation uh, resiliently to changes. And there are certain horizontal objectives which uh, support this, uh, such as um, awareness raising and uh, establishing relationship. The um, 20 percent uh, emission reduction is to be uh, understood as a uh, compared to the benchmark year or reference year, which is 2019. I have mentioned the uh, adaptation objective. Here uh, we focus on heat stresses uh, and uh, the distribution of of uh, precipitation. These are the two impacts uh, that are valid and present in Hungary mostly. And these are the problems uh, that have been identified as the great, the gravest. Um, there is an also important horizontal objective, namely that uh, the population is uh, becoming climate conscious. And there are various partnerships in the making because uh, the local uh, municipality needs to um, work together with several partners in the service sector, in uh, the operations of the city. I don't want to talk too much about um, establishing the status uh, uh, because uh, I'd like to focus mostly on the objectives of our climate strategy, the goals. Uh, but here we have a pie chart which shows you the various sectors responsible for gas emissions in Sekeshvervar. 
as you see, as I've mentioned, uh, the right hand side bottom corner uh, in green represents industrial uh, emissions. Sikeshvirvar uh, has major industrial operations contributing to greenhouse gas emissions. Um, and uh, the emissions of the service sector, marked red, uh, are also higher than residential emissions. Um, but don't be misled by that, because uh, these services are consumed by residents, so you cannot just shrug off this responsibility or pass it on to somebody else. <laughs> meaning uh, uh, that uh, we need to uh, mitigate uh, um, the uh, emissions uh, by making the right decisions in our daily lives uh, about consumption and what we consume. There is a major table here which shows you the most important uh, objectives uh, reducing uh, uh, emissions. Uh, I cannot go into detail. It's a document of over 100 pages covering many uh, topics, but I would like to mention some of these. Uh, first, I will talk about uh, the reduction measures uh, and then the adap adaptation measures. It is obvious when we talk about uh, um, climate strategy, we cannot omit any partner or neglect any partner. We need concerted action. And so we identified uh, proposed measures for each partner, for each participant, outlining the major directions, which could be supported by the climate, uh, uh, Sustainable Climate Action Plan. Uh, which uh, will pair with a uh, specific action plan later on. As far as the various sectors are concerned, um, the local government has a major role as it can influence its own building stock, its fleet, uh, uh, the uh, awareness raising of uh, municipal employees, uh, but also they may impact residents. Just think of uh, the event today when we openly communicate that the stance against climate change is vital for everyone. There is no exception. Everyone is involved. And this uh, shaping of awareness uh, could have a ripple effect uh, and ripple through uh, the society at large. It is important to set up a, a local government database because uh, the local government has to see what it has at hand, uh, uh, what are energy consumption data, where you can reduce certain things such as gas consumption, which seems to be key in these days, what solar uh, investments uh, are feasible and what schedules can be um, set. Uh, citizens and households uh, should focus on energy efficiency investment, uh, including insulation replacement of doors and windows, and investments into renewable energy, not only solar. You can use ambient heat, uh, using heat pumps, or mitrodion, geothermal energy. No, which is not typical of Sikesh Fairvar, but you can go in various other directions. Uh, at present, uh, um, wind is not a uh, um, viable option in Hungary, but sooner or later legislation may change and will might become a viable option soon. Citizens should be uh, motivated, supported with information, uh, with access to uh, application projects and we could set up an advisory office which is also part of uh, a climate strategy as a measure. Industry and services is the largest uh, uh, entities responsible for emissions. Uh, 
have uh, buildings, uh, large parking lots, huge buildings uh, suitable for installing solar panels and uh, not usable for anything else. So these uh, should be exploited and it's not a question that in the upcoming decade uh, installing solar panels will be an important uh, activity and it is also important to emphasize that we set directions and measures uh, for uh, the benefit of the client. Uh, um, it is not necessarily that will present um, um, viable economic opportunities. Solar offers uh, clean local energy and is not, uh, there is no need to import it. Waste management is also very important in the climate strategy. It's a very important sector too. And since we are not only talking about CO2, because that's, uh, that comes from fossil um, energy, and, and of course it is, it is emitted, but there are, there are, there are various other gases too, so methane and benetial oxygen too, and we'd like really to reduce these emissions as well and we must focus on this area too so bio waste composting is a very important element too and this can be this can be carried out at household level too and also the utilization of uh, and energy recovery from sewage sludge uh, transport is really very important because transport emission is significant and uh, we have to do, we have to change the decision making processes on uh, or concerning uh, tra transport modes too, and uh, also measures contained in the climate strategy point into this direction. How to help the population to to choose and to urge the population to choose uh, bicycle instead of. Uh, cars and uh, what types of investments and what types of support we can make incentives for the local population to use their bicycles obviously we have to we have to create um, bicycle lanes too and PR parking lots too in order for the population to change uh, transport modes but of course we have to raise awareness uh, with companies, with schools, we should organize events where we can inform the students and also the local population about an attitude change. It's not only in, it's not enough to create an op a, an opportunity and a possibility for cycling, but of course we have to control traffic and we have to reduce motor transport because cars occupy and various motor vehicles uh, occupy a lot of space so similarly to various big cities uh, the goal in Sikeshvayar is to create an area in the middle of the town or in the central areas of town with as little traffic as possible and car f car free zones lane reductions access restrictions i mean and, and a very important part of the climate strategy is renewable energy power power plants this is really very important because when it comes to urban planning or village planning uh, this can serve the retention of values and also energy saving and i visited a village in germany called waffenhofen in various even smaller villages but the goal was uh, to generate all the energy they needed uh, locally so that they sh should not import any energy and this is true for electric energy and heat energy too so they installed biomass and also solar and various other power, power plants and with the involvement of the local population they help this process because the local population buys shares of these uh, of, the, of the income these power stations generate and uh, they are interested financially in this development and it's also a very important direction that uh, there's a group of 
experts when it comes to running the local uh, urban areas or village areas and they just help to integrate all these renewable energy stations to the general national grid and this is happening in Hungary and in we need lots of local investments here too and there are biogas power stations too, too which can provide electric energy and heat as well so for instance, agricultural waste can be used in these power stations. And as for CO2, we also need carbon sequestration because we, we, we can also support sequestration. We, have, we can develop green roofs, green walls, green walls and uh, we can also uh, do and perform tree planting afforestation and we've uh, been quite active in this area and we need to uh, continue with these activities and like let uh, allow me to outline the adaptation goals and adaptation measures so we have urban adaptation targets and measures related to the targets and how to adapt uh, ourselves to warmer summers and longer droughts uh, because in May we've had temperatures of 30, 35 degrees centigrade and we are expecting even more serious heat waves in summer and this will be more frequent in future. So stress must be put on the reduction of emissions, how, how we can stop emissions. And as for adaptation measures, and in the focal point of these, well, it's the municipalities preparing for extreme weather conditions, improving the thermal performance of public buildings, and as I was talking about sequestrations, and as a jolly joker here, the green spots in urban areas, and that creates a balance between the heat management of covered areas and green areas and the retention of precipitation and rainwater helps a lot and obviously it has uh, we, we have to we have to build uh, shades uh, in the, so this is very important the role of green areas is really very important because they have a balancing effect and we, we'd like to create an overall green area in in in, in this town and afforestation has been mentioned too and also um, Shushto, which is a very important nature conservation area, we, the locals like to walk there and it's very important to preserve this area uh, in the respect of uh, climate. And uh, coming back to water retention in the precipitation water, uh, we cannot only address this issue at institutional level and at municipal level, but uh, individuals can also collect rainwater so they can join this process too because the extreme weather conditions and to counterbalance the effects when there's a large storm, rainstorm, if they can collect the rainwater from these rainstorms, they can use this water for irrigation and use the water for various other purposes. As for climate change in the future, it's not only irrigation water that uh, may cause problem, I mean quantitative problems, but of course uh, there might be restrictions on the supply of drinking water too, so we have to make well thought decisions in these areas uh, and we are talking about uh, creating uh, various rainwater reservoirs too. And we also want to use permeable pavements, green roofs, green facades, shading, light facade and cladding colors and uh, these adaptation solutions when, when it comes to a new uh, uh, investment then we plan larger green spots when it comes to a new facility with a green roof and also shading and insulation in reaction to 
changing climatic uh, reactions and these can be, they must be involved in municipal plans too and there are some horizontal measures too which comprehensively help uh, the reduction of emissions and also adaptation and we, we, we have we have to set up an expert group to support implementation and we have to perform campaigns of public awareness and train experts. And training is really very important in order to support various measures in the climate strategy and integration of climate objectives into development plans and training uh, courses with uh, various companies and schools uh, so that we raise the awareness of the local population and in in conclusion i'd like to highlight the fact that this is a common cause for a common goal because everybody is a role player and it is up to us how we can reduce the harmful effects of climate change and we really have to raise awareness uh, and uh, we have to involve all sectors and everybody must participate in, 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 in solutions and the partnerships are very important. An overall change in approach is very important too, but the strategy has a positive vision for the future and compared to the present situation, the vision says that uh, the future will be more livable and will result in a better town and better, better environment, better urban environment. Thank you for your um, attention. Thank you, László Magyar, for the presentation, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, may I invite Thomas Lanisek from the city of Kran, Slovenia, to hold his presentation. Dear Mayor, Mr. Ondras Cserpalkovic, dear participants and organizers, uh, it is uh, an honor for us to be a part of the Green City Solution Conference of Shehesh Vehervar. Thank you very much for your uh, invitation indeed. I'm uh, speaking in the name of our mayor, Mr. Uh, Matyas Rakovets, uh, and I'm the head of the Office for Development, Smart City and uh, Projects. Um, Kran is the third biggest uh, city in Slovenia. Uh, and it was considered the Silicon Valley of the former Yugoslavia. Nowadays, it is becoming a sustainable green and smart city. Uh, it was a very big honor for us also that we are actually, uh, was we were named uh, by the European Commission uh, two weeks ago to be a part of 100 uh, carbon neutral and smart cities till 2030. Uh, there were three cities from Slovenia, Ljubljana, Kran, and Velenje, and we are glad also to be in this uh, very important group of cities where we have also three Hungarian uh, cities within. Um, Kran, as, as a city and the city municipality, has approximately 60,000 inhabitants, and we are becoming definitely a sustainable and green and smart city. Um, so I would like to add and point out a few of the very important uh, projects on the e-mobility, transport in the city and uh, cycling areas, as well as green city and digitalization. Uh, at the end of the year 2020, we started the project of e-mobility, uh, which is based on the private-public partnership. Uh, the project which is actually very successful and already in the third stage and it was also noticed by the United Nations uh, EC Commission where we presented the case also two weeks ago in uh, Barcelona. <clears throat> Our goal was to change all vehicles to sustainable and drive for free if possible. Um, the project consists actually of three phases. So we have uh, the first phase of the replacement of all vehicles in the municipality and some of the public institutions with e-vehicles, that means all the schools and kindergartens as well as the, uh, the sewage company of Kran. Then the second uh, pillar is setting up public uh, changing 
charging stations in urban areas. Uh, so we have the same number of the charging stations as the number of the uh, of the uh, vehicles. And the third and the very important one is installing the rooftop solar powered plants. So we already actually are able to produce uh, enough electricity for 1.7 million uh, kilometers, which is just enough for all the needs that we need in the public part of this uh, project. Uh, but the idea is also in the afternoon and during the weekend to share those e-vehicles with our members of the public. But to do this, we need to implement actually the digital platform as well as the smart city card that are now being actually implemented with the tenders that we are just finalizing. Uh, with uh, the full implementation of the e-mobility project, the savings will be slightly bigger than the annual electricity consumption that uh, we need. Uh, and uh, 150 tons of carbon dioxide will be saved, which is actually absorption of the 8,000 trees, which is quite of a number. And in this, uh, actually, in this, in this respect, we also received the award for the best e-mobility city municipality in Slovenia last year. Transport in the city, sustainable transport, which is the name of the game all around European Union. Um, our goal is to make the city friendly for cyclists, uh, pedestrians, as well as the sustainable transport. Since 2017, we have an electric minibus in the city center and it's free of charge. Uh, there are also the hybrid buses in the city public transport. And we just got uh, uh, recently a very good news that 2.8 million euros subsidy from the non-refundable funding was given to Kran for purchasing electric buses that will be just enough for eight buses, which will uh, take over the, the majority of the needs that the city needs. From the 1st of June on the city public transport will be free of charge for pensioners, so people over 65 years, and for the disabled people that is something that is not just for the city of Kran, but that it's a uh, nationwide governmental move uh, of the, of the, of the uh, uh, current government. The city offers also car sharing, which is important point, and the park and ride car park with the new parking spaces and additional uh, infrastructure is planned uh, this year, later this year. Um, the cycling area, again, very important thing. We are from Slovenia, of course. Slovenia currently has three out of four top UCI cyclists in the world. So it's logical that we are cyclists, right? Very sporty nation. And we have approximately 60 kilometers of cycling lanes already. From comparison in 2017, there were only 24 kilometers of the lanes. So big, big advancement in that area. And it went very handy and came very handy during the COVID crisis when uh, uh, cycling and walking was very interesting and, and important. We have the largest electrified uh, biking, uh, bike sharing system in Slovenia and two electric tricycles also as part of the system can be used for transporting different items to the city center since the city center is of course closed for, for, for the other means of transport like uh, buses <coughs> and cars. People can use a uh, bike sharing system, Gorinska bike. That means also the whole uh, region of Gorinska, Upper Kaninola region, which is approximately 10% of, uh, of the country. So it's not only the city of Kram, but all other municipalities in that area. And we cover the region that includes actually five municipalities and totally 250 bikes. Uh, half of them are electric. Last year, we opened uh, also the Center for Sustainable Mobility, which is placed in the most populated housing state area, just a short walk away from the city center. Um, it contains, of course, the bicycle repair shop, also the info point, and uh, it's important that uh, we, as, as a cycling nation, also we, we host the official Tour de France event, uh, L'Etap Slovenie, in September. It's actually for the um, uh, amateurs, and it's going to be uh, done on the 4th of September, so if anybody of you happens to be in Slovenia, that area, in that date, uh, welcome. Uh, green city, uh, the name of the game, not just on the paper. It could be a buzzword, but for us in Kran, it's not just a buzzword. So we actually leave that uh, thing. Our goal is to plant at least 1,000 trees in the two mandates. That's uh, the mayor uh, Rakovets uh, uh, kickoff, I would say, at the beginning of, of, of his uh, the, 
tenure. And uh, we are very much into that. The first mandate is coming to an end. And yes, we have planted around 500 trees already. The biggest park in the city is planned to be done this year that will cover approximately 7,500 square meters. And the area was actually literally abandoned for more than 10 years. So uh, the re rejuvenation of the park is really uh, coming. And this is something that our citizens are looking forward to it. Um, we are uh, building also the green roofs, uh, not only on the new um, buildings, but also renovating uh, the, the old buildings, the schools and, uh, and such. Uh, when we are insulating those buildings, we try to do also this uh, CO2 move, uh, so CO2 neutrality move. So with the latest, uh, let's say, green roof that you see on the upper right corner, we already got actually additionally two classrooms in uh, uh, in the outside area, which which comes very handy for uh, pupils as well as for the teachers that are able now to actually uh, are able to marking the tests outside uh, in the nature, not only in the cabinets. Our goal is, is goal is also to strengthen the status of green and sustainably sustainable destination. Referring to that, Kran earned the certificate Slovenia Green Destination Gold Certificate, and the city follows a zero waste concept uh, that is actually happening for the second year in a row. And we actually uh, encourage each and every company to, to go in that area. We support sustainable events like last September the 1st, the sustainability was very important for us, and we did the sustainable culinary event that was organized called uh, Doga Misa or the long, the long uh, uh, dishes uh, table. Uh, the emphasis was on environmentally friendly transport, of course, avoiding single-use plastics, maximizing the use of local ingredients, and cooking uh, without discarding any edible food. And in this area, of course, then the carbon footprint was also measured. Uh, it's a bit, I would say, maybe uh, advanced and 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 uh, Garda, but uh, we actually follow this kind of logic uh, within the um, nutrition part of the schools and kindergartens. And in this respect, we also organize the platform for the um, uh, local, let's say, um, farmers that are able to sell. Uh, their food or their ingredients to the local schools. So uh, the important part is that uh, the ingredients uh, for food uh, make as less kilometers uh, to the table as possible. If we want to achieve all this, then the digitalization or the digital transformation is the name of the game. It's very important. Um, it cannot happen just over the night. Uh, it's quite complex on one hand, although it's very easy if you want to do it. Our mayor was visionary at the beginning of the term. This is also why a couple of us entered or joined the team, despite the fact that we are coming from businesses, but we are now in the public sector because we want to do things happen. And um, digital uh, transformation during COVID time, of course, uh, really got a big boost. Uh, so we, let's say, added up seven, seven years of uh, pushing forward these things, but now people are, and I'm today also in this area, uh, proof of that. So I joining you online, uh, not in person, and uh, people are able now to connect, are able to communicate, attend meetings online, but on the other hand, a lot of other things can be done. So in the area of digitalization, Slovenia is quite advanced, not, not the best ones in the European Union, but uh, in, within Slovenia, the city of Kran is definitely the most advanced uh, due to a lot of projects that were done of uh, so far. One of them for sure is the smart city Mlaka. Mlaka is part of the city uh, of Kran where our mayor actually encouraged quite a lot of companies, local companies uh, to use this sandbox. So the Mlaka area where that was uh, reconstructed for the sewage, electricity and water to make it at that time also as a very digital advanced one and smart. So those companies actually put together all the know-how R&D and other uh, materials together and they really came up with a mock-up. So it was POC, so proof of concept that was actually exercised and we had a very good proof that uh, we can actually exercise this kind of a project also abroad. 
in this respect, we now actually did a public tender for the production part for the whole city. And since our mayor, Rakovic, is also the head of the uh, of the Strategic Council of the, of the Gorinska region, uh, all those good know-how and uh, good knowledge as well as good exercise will be then done also in other neighboring um, municipalities, namely all 18 municipalities in Gorinska are able actually to go with that also. Um, why? Because the city of Kran has some, I would say, money and, and know-how and people that can do it. Smaller municipalities normally cannot do it. So in this respect, we uh, really much enable this uh, copy with pride effect or let's say sharing good know-how uh, and, and of course, bringing the cost down also for other, for other um, municipalities. Uh, referring to green city solutions, digitalization definitely takes an important part because we, we need to measure. If you don't measure, you cannot manage. And all the necessary steps within the 100 uh, EU city mission of the carbon neutral cities and smart cities are based on data, are based also on status quo today and changing this status quo in the next eight years. So uh, all the measurements also will need to be done also on the micro level, on the level of the households, not only on the macro level of the city. Uh, with engineers, as we said, as I said, we developed solutions for establishing Kran as a smart city. Uh, we already realized this pilot project uh, and the whole solution of digitalization and digital transformation was also shared with our national government that actually uh, saw that uh, this is a very good project. And, now, of course, in some cities try to establish uh, this uh, digital platform, which is actually the horizontal part of the whole project, then verticals, verticals on that platform are going to be done. So we started with the household, but later on, of course, uh, with also public tenders on the national level, we go into the area of traffic, smart traffic, uh, then parking and traffic are pretty much combined. And the next two pillars that we, go, we, we are going to, to actually uh, dig into are the, the e-school system as well as the e-health system. So all the solutions that are not on the not done on the national level, we need to do it locally and we will go there. So uh, with Smart Naka as the first one, of course, the households, we, we, we monitor smart lighting, smart environment, smart traffic, uh, smart energy and water. Uh, since we are pretty much condensed with the time, uh, you can maybe Google up the Smart Mlaka project, and there is also a video of a minute and a half where you can see the, the major takeaways on that. We are planning to use a smart city card, of course, also for the city services uh, such as parking, public transport, bike sharing, car rental, and so on, but not only for public uh, services. We are technical also the private ones since we want to combine the public and private together uh, within the loyalty system that will enable and encourage people to change their habits. And this is actually what we want to achieve. So when, when people get some credits or when they are hit on the pocket, uh, then they, we or we, uh, we, we change our habits. And, and in this respect, we would like to do it in, a, I would say, motivational way, not, not, not on, on, on uh, punishing somebody, but motivating to change the habits as much as possible. Uh, as I said, in April, European Commission confirmed Kranda as a member of this mission of 100 climate neutral and more smart European cities in 2030. From Hungary, those cities, so the fellow cities are Budapest, Miskolc, and Pech. In our uh, area, it's the capital Ljubljana as well as uh, the Vilenia. And uh, we would like definitely, uh, not only would like, but we are committed to reduce the energy use the costs for the environmental impact uh, also by the decree and by the documents that uh, the city council actually already approved in the past. And uh, after this first, I would say, uh, term of the mayor Rakovets is looming, uh, we are happy to see that uh, a lot of things and a lot of goals were achieved already, but a lot of things will need to be done in the future. And this is why also the mayor Rakovets will We'll go for the second term and also uh, continue with those projects that are uh, outlined and, of course, even more projects that are going to be achieved within this mission uh, that are is looming ahead. The challenge is the people. Uh, great people are always welcome and the business is done by the people. So uh, it's important to attract uh, also talents uh, within the public sector and also outside companies that work for us. 
so far so good, I would say, uh, since uh, the networks are important and uh, the whole name of the game of the European uh, Union uh, projects is to combine different cities together, different know-how in order not to invent America again. And in this respect, of course, the city of Kran is open to, to, to cooperation as well as uh, sharing the know-how whenever it's possible. With this, uh, I would say just thank you to all of you. Uh, hopefully it was uh, actually some good uh, intro uh, and some good uh, thoughts for you also with your endeavor in your cities. Uh, what we want to do is, of course, to change uh, ourselves. It's important that we change ourselves, not the others, because this is not possible. But to do this, we need to have the, the, the heads up on this, that uh, the change is possible only if we really start it, and we need to start today. With this, thank you very much. And uh, if there are any questions, uh, feel free to ask. Thank you. Hölgyeim és Öröm, tisztelt vendégeink, nagyon szépen köszönjük Tomás Lányisek úrnak. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you very much uh, for this presentation. And may I now kindly invite Eja Kinunen uh, from Kemi, Finland. Meaning greetings from Kemi and the rest of my presentation is in English, so don't worry. I'm sharing my screen. Do you now see my pictures from Kemi in presentation mode? I suppose so. Yes. Okay. Thank you for this opportunity to tell about the city of Kemi and its sustainable actions. My name is Eja Kinnunen and I'm sustainability coordinator of the city of Kemi and project manager of the project Green and Sustainable Kemi for Companies. And thank you for Thomas. It was very interesting to hear what, what happens in sustainability field in Kranz. I don't know how to say it, but you know what I mean. Very interesting. Thank you, Kemi. it's Kran, yes. <laughs> Kran, yes. <laughs> okay. Kemi is a small city with 20,000 inhabitants and it is situated in Finland, in southern Lapland, near Swedish border and by the Bay of Botnia. So the area is called Sea Lapland. Our location is not enough to still have four proper seasons, proper winters, suitably warm summers and varied springs and autumns between them, at least so far. And I'll now try to try to shortly enlighten what's the connection between SDGs of United Nations and rows of waste sorting pins in coffee rooms in our city hall. Pushing towards green and sustainable chemistry started properly when we as a city committed the sustainable development goals of the United States and Nations in 2017. Next year, the green and sustainable chemi model was included in our city strategy and SDGs are linked to strategy actions. And we also made the national societies commitment to sustainable development. So Finland, we want to be by 2050. We promise to reduce usage of plastic and to intensify recycling it. They are fine commitments, but how should we put them into practice? Kemi has been committed to the National Energy Efficiency Agreement already since 2008, which is remarkable when actions in energy fronts are concerned. This Finnish Energy Efficiency Agreement is a way to reach national energy efficiency targets set by European Union. But what else should we do? In 2018, we launched a project called Green and Sustainable Chemi. The target group was organization of our city, and one of the goals was to make Kemi green and sustainable by adding awareness of environmental issues and requirements of ISO 14001 environmental standard. So we started project work by choosing this ISO 14001 environmental standard as a tool to our actions, and we even got the 
environmental certificate for Kemi as the second municipality in Finland. There's still no other municipalities, only two of us who's in Finland having this certificate. And the project also outlined chemists joining to carbon neutral Finland network. The target of this network is to reduce emissions in city area by 80% from the level of year 2007 by year 2030. And we are well on our way. One operation model of the project was to act agile and experimentally. So we created, for example, social kitchen model to reduce food waste and increase green and social dining. Model started fine and it was transferred to be developed further to another project called year-round urban farming and local food production in Kemi. And when Green and Sustainable Kemi project ended, we continued with a new project, with a new target group, and we invented a new, very imaginary name for the project. It was called, it is called Green and Sustainable Kemi for Companies. And this pro project is still ongoing. All these three essential projects for Green Kemi are financed by European Regional Development Fund, two by Regional Council of Lapland, and one by Center for Economic Development, Transport, and the Environment. And this project finance is essential in green and sustainable work of GEMI. We, we are a small town with small resources. The scope of ISO 14001 environmental certificate consists now of 19 targets, and the scope of ISO 40. 5001 Occupational Health and Safety Certificate consists of nine targets. For example, all the, all the schools of Kemi and two daycares have both certificates. And what's the point for a city to comply with the standards? Well, standards give frames and direction and certificates give also deadlines to your actions. They advance efficiency, systematics, and consistency of actions. Standards encourage to cooperation and increase communication. Information spreads and ideas rise. And a standard requires continuous improvement. You have to set goals and monitor the achievements at least yearly. Some examples of concrete actions in Kemi. Waste disposal system was ostensibly the easiest area to start, but it was surprisingly challenging, for example, due to several operators in the field. But it was, on the other hand, a fine area to achieve something visible. For example, long and handsome rows of sporting systems in, for example, our coffee rooms, or swimming hall or schools and daycare. So everyone that we are sorting our waste. Solar energy systems are installed always when reasonable. We have large systems, for example, on the roofs of our year round snow castle and our new daycare, which is by the way, one of the biggest lock structured daycares in Europe and it is class A energy efficient. One very significant low carbon action in Kemi has been the new district heating plant, which came into operation last year. And it means reduction of district heat CO2 emissions with about 65%, which is remarkable. Over 50% of inhabitants in Kemi use district heat, and this plant covers all the district heat needs. And it, it uses only wood, that comes from neighborhood forests and the ashes are used to fertilize forests uh, and we don't actually use fossil fuel at all in district, um, district heat. Uh, influencing on traffic is very challenging in a small city like Kemi. We, ha we have in Kemi, so airport, railway, deep harbor, and due to industry in our area, busy heavy traffic. Uh, 
And furthermore, due to small population and long distances, every household has a car or two cars. It's very difficult to create flexible and well-functioning public transport. But the guiding idea is in Kemi, how could we decrease cars with only one passenger? And we had done some, something. In city organization, we prefer electric or hybrid, hybrid vehicles when rational. In cooperation with public transport operator, we have encouraged people to use buses with various free campaigns. For example, the summer, summer Shuttle, which is a city line free for passengers in summer weekend evenings and sponsored by local companies. And we encourage people to use bicycles. We have old renovated green bicycles as city bikes with small fee. In daycare, we have kit buses that are electrically assisted cargo bikes. And during winters, we have even city kick sleds. As I mentioned before, we have developed social kitchen model in order to reduce food, food waste meaning local groceries donate mainly fruits and vegetables that otherwise would end up in waste. Our expert sorts them and makes meals or smoothies or something of them together with various groups of people. During last three years, thousands of people have involved in this operation, at least by tasting. And last year, approximately 80,000 liters of food was saved. And the actual green year 2019 was the 150th anniversary of Kemi. So we planted 150 spruces in Kemi area and donated 2000 spruce plants for our inhabitants to be planted. And we have this city farming project, which together with local agricultural school advances city farming in city yards and is advancing also allotment actions in Kemi. And we have planted also natural flowers in our city area. For our 20 winters, we have built a large snow castle, including hotel, restaurants, sauna, chapel, perform performance stages, ice sculptures, playgrounds made of snow and ice. And for some years now, we have had also a year-round ice castle that uses ecologically, for example, solar panels and geocold to maintain its cold and frost. As a result, it's only natural that also plenty of snowmen live in Kemi. We have started a campaign, co campaign called Save Our Snowman, SOS, targeting to maintain proper winters and living condition for our snowmen and snow women also. And finally, some guiding ideas in our green and sustainable work in Kemi. In projects, it is easier to be agile and experimental than in actual city organization. Cooperation and communication are essential. Climate change don't recognize borders and you can't act a machine alone. Everyone can do something, both big and small deeds are needed. And the Ideal situation would be that we wouldn't have to raise this issue separately at all. It would be ideal if sustainable development would be a default criteria in all our decision making and acting. Thank you. And now, may I kindly invite Agnes Lipce to deliver her presentation. Good morning, everyone. Uh, I'm an urban planner and I'm a horticultural engineer. I, I'm here from Nyíregyháza, from the eastern end of the country, and I used public transport, and I can join uh, the final words of our previous presenters, so big plans are needed. And 
So I'm, I'm going to present a big plan to you. In the, so there was a <coughs> public procurement uh, tender and we were granted this opportunity to carry out this plan. So this is, this is a meadow uh, in Sekeshvahirwa, in the southern part, and this was taken in August 2020. So this is an impressive area, and uh, we we had done preliminary activities and exploration before we started planning. And as a result of botanical examinations, we now can say that this area is uh, the main feature is dry meadow and botanically it's not really very important so it's just dry grass meadow and uh, but of course it can contain remarkable values too and we have to pay attention to all these values during the planning phase and also the implementation phase when i received uh, this assignment so this is a big plan so the construction part of this investment is really very complex and also the green infrastructure so this is a very complex large project so what can i tell you and what can i present to you in 20 minutes from the point of view of climate risk reduction, so I'd really like to focus on the complex nature of this project in my slides. And may I just uh, call your attention to various uh, challenges that made our preliminary activity and planning activity um, very difficult. And uh, we had to focus on those not only during the planning phase, but also during the construction and implementation phase as well. So all in all, this area stretches over 31 hectares, green focus, complex technical content, so the construction of an access road and car park, construction uh, and, and also walkways and green infrastructure, very important in the forest station using silvicultural methods and planting of tree lines using horticultural cultural methods, construction of an internal footpath network, simple water management tasks. So we do not really want, we, we, we didn't really interfere and intervene, we just regulated the natural infrastructure to a rate that can be really influenced by this planning and what uh, environmental conflicts we had to face. So we, we do not know too much. Uncharted natural assets, and we know that this is an inland water and low lying area, and it's not only low lying in the and the ground water contains a lot of carbonate and so it is aggressive and this means a saline soil in saline water and and we also have uh, this this area is of archaeological interest to another aggravating circumstances the area is affected by a bypass road that is currently being planned and we build uh, service infrastructure this is for for, for this green investment uh, so we we need some utilities and there are no utilities within the plot and so the distance is quite great and this was animated and it doesn't seem to work so mm -hmm. has it been converted into pdf format Can you not switch it over to PPT format? Well, but because it 
originally I was animated. The slide. It would be really very important, not not now at this moment, but later on, and, and must apologize. So, so the presentation of the plan based on the objectives. So here locally, the goal and the objective. Well, the objectives were really determined very carefully, and I'd really like to. The program is essentially a, a large scale forest and park development for both leisure and recreation, which for which forest areas and gifts and groves are presented in a mosaic of interconnected systems. What is so great against that? So the investor uh, has clear objectives and. Uh, and of course, fine tuning elements and also some areas for the future. So, what free time or leisure time infrastructure should be placed in this plot? And I don't know whose idea this key sentence was. So, the key part of this key sentence is in which forest areas and groves are presented in a mosaic of interconnected systems. So we were planning a forestation. And when we pay attention to ecological circumstances, we are planning to a forest with groves uh, in a mosaic uh, and interconnected system. This is what I call fine-tuning for uh, preparing the strategy. The point uh, of this conference uh, shows uh, the, 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 the main points of uh, this uh, conference is prevention, adaptation, and sustainability, and strengthening local capacity to reduce greenhouse gas, greenhouse gas emissions. This is the objective of the conference. What does the European Union say? Uh, uh, growers save 8.9 percent of gas in the EU one year, that is uh, 2014 data, and the EU is putting strong emphasis on land use and the role of forests in uh, the fight against climate change, and we are going to plant forests uh, with groves plus infrastructure and infrastructure services. So, uh, developing a forest and parkland, uh, uh, and this is what uh, the um, developer had in mind, infrastructure which helps uh, uh, um, spend leisure time will be invented later, and here is a sentence talking about fine-tuning. So we'd like to create a forest. As this is an international conference, let me introduce you where we are. We are southwest uh, from the capital city of Budapest, 65 kilometers from Budapest and 45 kilometers from the Lake Poloton. We are three kilometers from the city center of Sipesfehervar. Uh, here is the uh, city center and the design area. It is uh, uh, bordered by two streets and, and, uh, um, and there is uh, water treatment, a sewer, sewer, treat, a sewer treatment plant uh, on the uh, 200 meters away. On the western side, there's a residential area. The south also has a residential area. And there is a, a valley called the Ditch, uh, which is an intermittently flooded area. Uh, and uh, here you also see the route uh, of uh, the planned bypass, uh, um, which will affect the area. Uh, let us talk about the difficulties and risks. Uh, 
which uh, are, were challenges for planning and will also be challenges for uh, building and operations. Uh, I think uh, uh, without uh, agreeing to take on uh, these risks and challenges, I don't think you can effectively manage uh, uh, climate. We have a fundamentally flat land, flat terrain, a very exciting meadow, and there are no trees, and we have aggressive groundwater, and there's also inland water. We tried to collect uh, uh, groundwater data from um, the Water Authority. In 2010, there was no inland water. In 2016, there was more intensive presence of uh, inland water. And these photographs were taken from the plan or from the representative of the local government. I could not associate, they couldn't associate uh, the year, so we also turned to the water authority, uh, telling them that we have uh, uh, larger water surfaces and pictures with larger water surfaces uh, and requested them for data and they then uh, showed us the potential inland water coverage uh, and you see there is a, a single white space here. Terrain conditions, uh, inland water threat uh, uh, present an exercise for us. Uh, we need to perform an archaeological, uh, uh, geological analysis, uh, and the soil tests had to be performed. There are elevation points. This geodetic uh, survey was used for many purposes during planning. Our archaeological area is at the highest point. Uh, it is a plateau based on. Um, detailed botanical study, uh, the potential occurrence of bo uh, botanical values uh, 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 is on the plateau, and the urban strategic water allocation uh, plan requests the uh, uh, retention of buffer storage capacity in the design area. And the, uh, uh, we have access to water in the north, and uh, we have electric uh, supply in the south. And there is also an opportunity for uh, sewer um, services. Uh, this section, for instance, is 180 meters here, just so that you know what distances are involved. Uh, afforestation. Basically, uh, the port project had in mind to afforest 60% of the area, which is a nice uh, uh, figure. If you are into urban planning, uh, you should know that this is a public park, uh, but it is not classified as a forest. But because of the intention to afforest, We received uh, an expert uh, review identifying uh, six uh, segments. Uh, what was, uh, what did the study conclude uh, over and above what I've shared with you already? So, so salt is present in deeper layers of the soil. So in the case of installation and construction, we need to pay much attention to excavation work uh, so as to replace soil in the original um, setup of layers, which uh, uh, renders uh, implementation and construction costlier. We will select the various species uh, to plant, and we will have a preference for salin-tolerant um, species. Uh, we have also found that there are three types of soil in the area, in four mosaic uh, patches, uh, uh, saline soil, carbonate soil, and uh, grove soil. 
of the four, uh, one lends itself especially to afforestation. With the carbonate soil is the most unfortunate for this purpose. Uh, we are in. Um, Uh, we are lucky because the carbonate grove soil is on the plateau where we don't want to uh, plant uh, uh, for forests uh, because it uh, is it has archaeological and botanic interests Um, there are certain basic species which are recommended by the study. Two of uh, these species uh, are not compatible. They are not native to the area. Let me point out to you that the um, silvicultural nomenclature uses uh, Uh, the method of uh, rating uh, um, the, um, the the land, and this is a, a not nature close uh, area. Uh, uh, there are certain native uh, species. Uh, native species are the ones that we prefer, uh, such as uh, oak and. Uh, Willow. Uh, we looked at um, the uh, planted forests of the area in an area of a, uh, in a circle of a kilometer, kilometer, and we also listed the species found in uh, forested areas. This is the area that we should uh, uh, forest up to 60 percent. So we have developed a list of species and of indigenous species too, where we can find specimens within one, one kilometer radius uh, around Sekeshvera. And this list uh, must ha have to be screened based on saline tolerance. And uh, this is, uh, and uh, you can you can see that we indicated various species with different colors. So e green means they are uh, deciduous, uh, indigenous, and saline tolerant. And uh, the ones indicated in pink uh, are salt tolerant, but they are not indigenous species too. So these species were involved in the licensing plan as well because when the forestry work took place, uh, the knowledge of this table will uh, create some room for maneuvering for the related expert. And here you can see various different types of soils too. So grove soil in the meadow soil, as well as black soil and we created a grid and, and we are indicating various types of soil with different uh, points too and we created also squares of smaller squares in order for us to explore why there are pieces of meadow worth saving so that we do not have any built infrastructure in these areas. Those with sharp eyes can see that uh, in this triangle um, the distribution of areas is not even because we visited this area in, in various seasons too and uh, before we started the botanic investigation we examined the vegetation and where we could see uh, various spots of the same species then we did not apply so many grids but where we saw mosaic-like uh, meadow structures we applied more grids. So the meadow is of mosaic nature and uh, very different 
Well, we need this mosaic type when, by the time we develop the investment plan. And we made a habitat map by GIS uh, category. And this is this in Hungary is a standard classific classification systems of habitats. I'm not really going to read this list for you because all the presentations will be accessible online. And this was what we could see after our detailed investigations. So we created a list of species too and also a rendered coverage values to that and based on all these two data the expert established uh, the natural characteristic of these grids and they have their own methodology and in order to make it more conspicuous we rendered various colors to that and the areas indicated in dark red are the ones closest to nature and therefore most valuable so point 22 is a very light point and so there are hydrological uh, facilities there and uh, experts visit that and there's motor traffic there for maintenance pur purposes and also uh, the water management board visits this area very often so this is why this spot is so light and of course that this plateau is indicated with a different color so we had a planning program with well-established documents too. So there was a study plan prepared by the municipality. And this was done by a planning office for an area twice, ten times the size of this area. But they defined the basic concepts too and basic criteria. And we were in and we dealt with just a partial area of 31 hectares and now we can talk about the technical plan too and we've, we've done um, the fundamental work and also risk analysis. So the, this other planning office planned more infrastructure, a football field, and less a forested area and also a facility and various service buildings and fitness playground so they thought they were thinking in terms of uh, in develop the infrastructure to develop and this is the planning our planning program 2020 because for each element for the green elements and also for the built elements uh, there are various tech technologies uh, rendered to all these elements and I'd like to speed up my presentation because I'm running out of time so this is a comprehensive plan and uh, you cannot really see all the details in these lighting lighting conditions so this is the ring road and there are very pale spots here and this is the main road and the parking place and here's this um, area with uh, archaeological interest too and there's a there's also a low area with a dirt road and it must be preserved and there's a clear plateau here for sports grounds and uh, there we have we have some openings here for the placement of infrastructure so the we have another drawing of the site plan too so we have we shall have a reception building too and those who remember the analysis there's a local height as well so we have water permeable cladding for substructures 
and the connecting asphalt road, eco stone paved access road and parking, optional road with gravel pavement and pavement paving is very important too and I haven't mentioned it but we we are going to cover the walkways uh, uh, and also we, we applied drainage facilities too if uh, local water comes to the surface and we wouldn't like it to destroy the structure surfaces and due to the soil conditions we are using uh, drainage systems too and uh, we get the gravel from local quarries and this is a detailed picture but this is really of very low quality. So this is the access road and parking, and there's a cross section, and also the water permeable solutions. And you can't really see too much of the uh, layout of the building. Yes, so this building it will be on a high surface and uh, close to a uh, natural structure so there there will be uh, the facility and also the mechanical block with an underground passageway and then there will be a covered gateway a roof terrace and mechanical engineering facility and there's going to be some catering a catering part too and there will be a terrace on the ground and the terrace will be shaded and well we shall have a structure to, to hold the solar panels here you can see the various earthen work and this is the the functional at, at, the, at the functional zero level of the facility and here's the roof terrace what are uh, the uh, solutions for uh, reducing climate risk earth cover which air conditions in the summer and the winter uh, heat insulation you cannot really see this in this picture there are also a certain uh, abutments uh, of the roof there are uh, separate there's a HEP separate heating system uh, toilets and buffet can be heated separately uh, toilets uh, are uh, uh, cooled uh, using solar cells and water the SAGE system uses hot and uh, cold water with a large ventilation and recycling system the energy management classification of the building is other by the nomenclature and it's close to zero so it stops in terms of uh, uh, climatic effect this is an exciting uh, section and let's see some visualization plans uh, and this is the uh, parking lot this is the uh, lookout terrace uh, and the, the next is uh, the surroundings of the reception building we use permeable covers uh, uh, using botanic methods uh, for uh, planting intensive turf laying around the building building there are no intensive brushes uh, uh, in the plans. This is the view from the uh, forested uh, portion. And we use intensive horticultural uh, methods. Uh, this is uh, the earthwork of um, the access road and uh, access walkway. Uh, with uh, an elevated crest. Now let's talk about afforestation. We base this on um, soil genetics. Uh, the fundamentally, there were three uh, different patterns uh, for the three different uh, soil types: uh, soil wedge carbonate and deep saline. 
and uh, we uh, provided a little bit of leeway if uh, um, the mosaic aspect of the area wanted to be uh, emphasized. Uh, you see th this area is a carbonated soil and a total deep saline afforestation will be implemented in these areas. Also we will have uh, edge forests. Uh, this is a pattern. This is the uh, edge of um, the forest lane or the forest line and the alleys uh, are around uh, and in the vicinity of the building and along the uh, access road. Uh, I emphasize alleys because we planted horticultural quality uh, uh, trees, so technology and size uh, and dimensions are important here. In terms of numbers, let me highlight the numbers of trees uh, uh, close to uh, 1,800 individual trees were planted. Uh, grass turf laying uh, uh, could be either intensive on uh, flatland and slopes. Uh, as we move away uh, from the building, it's uh, extensive both on flatland and on slope. And, uh, and there are certain areas which we uh, split off at the beginning of uh, the building. It is important to highlight uh, that we had a botanic uh, Study, and we selected from among uh, the potentially available uh, seeds, grass seeds, uh, and also mixed these seeds and receive, uh, made a recommendation as to the mixture of the seeds to be used in the area for planting grass. There are certain rest areas, uh, relaxation areas along uh, the walkways. This is the major uh, rest area at the edge of the plateau, offering good vista. We have two rest areas uh, transversally along uh, the, uh, uh, the walkway. And the terminal end uh, at the railway is something where you can sit down and view the areas uh, around. A few um, wooden structures for relaxation. Street furniture are unique in certain places. And these were placed in the various uh, uh, relaxation areas and so on and so forth. What are the conclusions? How did we reduce risk, uh, climate risk during planning? Um, the green focus is stable with 60% of afforestation, e even this if risks uh, are there. We try to use local material, local building materials and use permeable uh, paving, uh, environmentally friendly insulation materials. Uh, and we selected technologies that promoted the goal. In closing, I would like to uh, emphasize uh, the thoroughness of uh, the, uh, of the uh, initial work which laid the foundations for the project. Uh, I thank uh, uh, pro for the professionalism, for maintaining relations, uh, uh, and this has been a good example of how to join efforts to mitigate climate risk. And we have found that uh, cooperation was excellent during the planning stage. Thank you. Distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, 
we are resuming now and we are carrying on with the presentations in the I'd like to inform you about the presentations in the second half of our uh, conference. So, our Twin City in Germany will be in introduced by two presentations. Uh, Inga Adam, Deputy Head of Section, Municipal Development Coordinator, will deliver the presentation online entitled Sustainable Development with the involvement of the local population, then uh, Jessica Lauren Passler, and these will be followed from Opole by Sebastian Smolinski, head of the Department of Environmental Protection and Agriculture, Animals Protection Equipment in the Greenfield sites of Opole. The, co the closing presentation of our conference will be delivered by the, the Nature Protection Manager of the Sekas Ferrat city trusteeship limited company ent entitled climate protection from an thank you for having us today on this event um first of all i would like to convey greetings and best wishes from our lord mayor richard arnold to all of you especially the host of this meeting our twin city i would like to shortly introduce myself my name is Jessica Passler. I am working in the Department of Economic Development in Schwäbisch Gmünd, and my job is to support our local startup scene. Today, I will guide you through the presentation from our Department for Sustainable Development, Climate, uh, climate Protection and Citizen Participation, because all colleagues there are all together prevent today. Mr. Alexander Kroll, head of the Department for economic development has to attend an important kickoff meeting from our model region Green Hydrogen Baden-Württemberg in our state capital Stuttgart, which is why I will hold his presentation as well. I am very pleased to present you um, today our municipal structures as well as uh, the possibilities of citizen participation for sustainable urban redevelopment in Schwäbisch Gmünd. I have prepared the following agenda for my presentation. Okay. Our beautiful city, Schwäbisch Gmünd, is located in the district of Ostabkreis in the federal state of Baden-Württemberg and is home to more than 61,000 people. Schwäbisch Gmünd is known for its more than 2,000 small and medium-sized enterprises and global players in the automotive industry, mechanical engineering, and the manufacture of metal products. The city has a total area of about 113 square kilometers. In the picture on the left, you can see our gold and silver forum, a great building that was built as part of the State Garden Show in 2014. The gold and silver smith trade in Schwäbisch Gmünd are linked by a centuries long tradition. Beginning in the 14th century, the gold and silversmith art is still a very important in Schwäbisch Gmünd today. Now I would like to introduce to you to our three mayors, Lord Mayor Richard Arnold, First Mayor Christian Baron and Mayor Julius Miem. In our city, we have 52 elected members of the Municipal Council and 120 elected members of the 11 districts of Schwäbisch Gmünd. In the picture below, you can see all these political representatives. On the, on the left of the picture, you can also see our municipal coat of arms. It is a silver unicorn raised in red. The town flag is also white and red, and a unicorn is already documented on a town seal in the 13th century. At this point, I would like to give you a brief overview of various institutions that belong to our city. We have a municipal drainage company, the Stadtgarten Congress Center, and the Hospital Foundation. The Schwäbisch Gmünd City Administration consists of three departments as well as a staff council. Today, I would like to introduce you to Department 1, for which Lord Mayor Richard Arnold is responsible. The departments of human resources, internal administration, economic development, culture, but also the Office for Sustainable Development, Climate Protection and Citizen Participation are part of it. Part of this department are these five people. Frank Katzanek is the head of the office. 
Inga Adam coordinates the municipal development policy. Lorena Brico assists all the team members. Anja Tam is the mobility manager. And Chiara Chris is our climate manager. The positions of the coordinator for municipal development policy, the mobility manager and the climate manager were initially project positions financed by federal funds. These could also be described as lone wolves with sustainable cross-sectional tasks that fall under municipal responsibility. However, for the city council, as well as the Lord Mayor of Schwäbisch Gmünd, there was a need for sustainable development in our city. For this reason, they bundled these project positions into one department and made the positions permanent. At the, this point, I would like to present the idea uh, behind the foundation of our department. This is the, loca uh, the local implementation of the sustainable development goals development policy, mobility, and climate protection. The mission is to strategically bundle the existing concepts and measures and to create the basis for further planning. In doing so, we want above all to be an impulse generator, motor, and think tank. We network the internal and external partners at the location and also network ourselves locally, nationally, and internationally. In order not to get stuck in the pure planning phase, we always think that our target group and use the bottom-up principle. It is also important for us to translate these important issues and to take people along with us in factual and communicative way. We are sure that this is how we can drive forward a sustainable urban development process. Now I would like to show you examples of how we can achieve sustainable change in the city through citizen participation. On the one hand, informative citizen participation is important to us. We achieve this through our own online platform, Kmünd für morgen, Kmünd for tomorrow, and prepare all important information there. Dialogue-based citizen participation also plays an important role for us. Citizens can reach us at any time via contact form and share their thoughts, which um, are then directly recorded in the team. We would also like to involve the citizens in our mission in terms of financial participation. There is the possibility to, don to donate one euro per month to the city of Schwäbisch Gmünd and also to participate in deciding how we invest the money. In addition, it is of course po possible to participate financially in climate partnerships and funds. Together with committed citizens, we have formed working groups with the aim of actively involving them in the decision-making process. A climate council was formed, a working group on mobility issues and a working group on one world. Another example of our agenda, Kmünd 2035, was a joint visit to the Spring Trade Fair in Stuttgart. The themes of this fair were slow food, sustainability and fair trade. Currently, the Office for Sustainable Development, Climate Protection and Citizen Participation is also in the process of developing further workshops as part of the Kmünd Agenda 2035. The city of Schwäbisch Kmünd also participated in a European Energy Award. The starting point was a municipal climate action plan <laughs> and a strategy for a municipal development policy until 2030. The fields of action where um, we are pursuing include climate neutral heating, renewable energy, green mobility and global responsibility. We also carried out a pedestrian traffic check this involved a kickoff workshop with citizens in autumn and winter 2020. Representatives of the interest groups inclusion, senior citizen and integration were involved. The aim was to find a common definition of the critical places in the southern part of Schwäbisch Gmünd. A final workshop 
that took place on um, 5th of April this year, during which the first measures were implemented with a minimal effort but maximum success. Also, a municipal cycle route plan has also been developed here in our city. The introduction of e-scooters this, um, this spring uh, is another example. You can see it here in this picture. In the future, the charging infrastructure for electric cars will also be expanded. The picture shows a charging station in front of our city administration building. Together with the retail businesses in our city, we have developed a guide for fair and sustainable shopping. This shopping guide can be used to find particularly sustainable and fair trade products and services. The city of Schwäbisch Gmünd also cooperates with the startup Green Venture. The startup is known for the intelligent placement of solar modules on roofs and for the smart procurement of solar modules. The aim is to motivate private households in particular, but also businesses and administration. Interested citizens can check the potential of a photovoltaic system on the roof of their house directly on our website. In addition, we plan sustainable energy resources in our municipality. This involved first taking stock of the current energy consumption and demand of all private and public buildings. This was followed by a business survey to plan future economic development. The aim is to determine the focus of centralized and decentralized energy supply and integration of renewable energy and waste heat in the future. The last example I would like to present to you is the global responsibility and know-how exchange that we are actively pursue. This includes the municipal climate partnership with Bahia Ethiopia, the project partnership with Pionia Greece, and also the support of Ukraine uh, within the framework of development cooperation. So thank you so much for your attention for my first presentation. Now I uh, would like to continue with my second presentation. I'm happy that um, I'm also allowed to present you our H2 Aspen pilot project view. Um, Aspen is a sustainable technology and industrial park of the future with a focus on hydrogen blend uh, in our city and located in the green hydrogen model region in the state of Baden-Württemberg. Um, this industrial park is not only important for the city of Schwäbischgmünd, but also for our country Ostalbkreis and the entire region of, of Ostwürttemberg. The industrial park is intended ex exclusively for companies in future technologies, for example, hydrogen, semiconductors, battery cells, etc., and is to, um, to be supplied with 100% renewable energy. This agenda guides us through the presentation. I would like to start directly with the presentation of the location. Here you can see the location of the city of Schwäbisch Gmünd and um, the Ostwürttemberg region in the south, in the southern Germany. The Ostwürttemberg region is located in the east of our federal state of Baden-Württemberg and borders on the federal state of Bavaria. Strategically, we are located on an axis, as you can see here, where large plants and companies are located such as Daimler in Stuttgart or BASF in Ludwigshafen, which we will have a need for hydrogen in the future. In our view, hydrogen plays an, an essential role to stop the global climate change. Here you can see a more detailed location of the city of Schwäbisch Gmünd in our federal state Baden-Württemberg. The distance to the airport in the state capital Stuttgart is approximately 50 minutes. 
The container port in Stuttgart can be reached in about 45 minutes. And right here, you can see now the near area around the plant Aspen Technology and Industrial Park. On the left, you can see the largest contiguous industrial area in Ostwürttemberg region called Gückling. The Aspen Technology and Industrial Park is to be built in the direct neighborhood. Many large and successful companies have settled in the existing Gückling Industrial Park, which you may also have heard of, such as Bosch, Automotive uh, Steering, First Alpine, Automotive Components, Magna Steyr, Fuel Systems, and many more. Almost all those companies here are suppliers to the automotive industry and find themselves in a classic industrial area of the 20th century. Now here you can see the first step of the required development plan, procedure and construction law. In December 2021, the Municipal Council unanimously gave green light for further planning of the Sustainable Technology Park. The area is going to be developed in two parts. The left orange part is 420,000 square meters wide and has uh, 280,000 square meters on, of net building land. The green spaces are deliberately generously planned. The right blue part will be planned as required from 2025 on. At this point, I would like to present you a few um, key data on Schwäbisch Gmünd as a business location. The Gückling industrial area is approximately 1,220,000 square meters in size. More than 60 companies are located there and employ over 4,000 people. The share of manufacturing and producing industry is 9% above our national average. Moreover, young, uh, many young people work there. Here we are 6% over national average. This location is undergoing a high level of transformation. The companies that exist there are not only struggling with a change in the automotive industry, but also have to adapt to the current situation of the corona pandemic, digital process, climate protection goals, and now also the, the effects of the, the tragic war in Ukraine, where, all, um, where we all have to face even more consequences in the fossil energy sector. The future elimination of fossil energies will accelerate these transformation processes. With Aspen, we would like to offer companies the opportunity to realign their product processes and company orientation step-by-step step alongside their ongoing operations because transformation and change is an ongoing process with cannot, which cannot be handled one day to the next. Uh, this, you know, the city of Schwäbisch Gmünd has applied for several funding programs to realize Aspen. In this context, I, in this context, I would like to mention the European Regional Development Fund and our model region Green Hydrogen Baden-Württemberg which is uh, funded additionally through the state of Baden-Württemberg. The H2 Aspen Technology Park in Schwäbisch Gmünd is one of four projects in this model region and is going to be completed in stages until 2024. The focus here is on an 8.5 megawatt hydrogen electrolysis plant that is going to produce up to 2,500 kilograms of hydrogen per day. This would be enough to drive a car around Earth about five times every day. With the funding and the financial resources we receive, we um, are able to build this 8.5 megawatt hydrogen electrolyzer. In addition, we are able to connect the electrolyzer to the municipal gas grid via a national gas pipeline. The funding also includes the construction of the gas storage facilities and the public hydrogen filling station to fuel up cars, buses, or trucks with hydrogen. In total, we will receive funding about 10 million euros. This corresponds to a funding rate of approximately 
50%. In addition, we will receive uh, 400,000 euros in funding as part of the High Experts Federal Funding Program in Germany. This corresponds to a funding rate of 100%. We will use this fund to develop regional hydrogen concepts. Also, we would like to build up and strengthen a regional hydrogen network and use the fund to commission the necessary consulting, planning and services. In order to implement the technology park, various in infrastructural framework conditions also have to be thought of. There are considerations to establish a local container station in a neighboring municipality. This container station could be connected to Aspen by a rail link or a smart monorail system so that goods can be transported by rail in a climate neutral way. In order to Think of the technology side in a complete sustainable manner. Not only the companies play a big part, but also their transportation systems. In the area lies a national gas pipeline, seen here in red, which will later be um, of great importance for the transport of hydrogen. Currently, natural gas runs through this gas pipeline. In order to achieve our national aspirations of fossil energy ind independence, there are already concrete plans to convert this natural gas pipeline for hydrogen transport by 2030. The supply of water to the industrial park is ensured by a national, na nationwide water connection system seen here in blue. Renewable energies are of great importance for this new industrial park. There are already solar, wind, and biogas plants in the near area of Aspen. But due to very special characteristics of German electricity market, they cannot be used directly for the industrial park. However, there are, um, there are concrete plans in progress to expand new solar and wind power plants that can supply Aspen directly with renewable energy. The energy supply company Energy Baden-Württemberg has analyzed the open spaces for photovoltaic in Schwäbisch Gmünd as part of a potential assessment and comes up with a potential of 185 megawatt. A further assessment of the potential for wind energy in Schwäbisch Gmünd and neighboring communities was carried out. The total potential here is around 192 megawatt. Here you can see our timetable for the realization of ESPEN. The most important goal is to complete the, the development of uh, the area by the first quarter of 2024, so that companies can start to build their plans there. Our goal is to enable a production for the companies in the first or second quarter of 2025. New jobs and skilled workers moving to Schwäbisch Gmünd also require providing new housing developments. We are building around 1,000 new residentials, residential units by 2025. Here you can see um, where these new residential areas near Aspen are going to be built in Schwäbisch Gmünd. Now I would like to summarize the most important points for you. The city of Schwäbisch Gmünd is planning Aspen, a sustainable technology park that will offer development opportunities to companies in the hydrogen sector and other future technologies. The area we, um, where we are going to realize Aspen is previously underdeveloped greenfield that is currently used for industrial agriculture. The first section of the development plan is designated with an area of 420,000 square meters and a net building land area of 280,000 square meters. The area is going to be designated as an industrial area as part of um, the development plan process. In German construction law, the industrial area is the area with the highest requirements for the respective use. We also involve the local educational and research in institutions located in our region in the creating process. 
Aspen is close to the European highway E43 and E47. The international airport in Stuttgart and has a well-developed public transport with a nationwide railway connection in Schwäbischgmünd. In addition, we consider a local container station facility with a direct rail connection to Aspen. Renewable energies such as solar or wind farms are imperative in supplying Aspen with green electricity. In addition, green hydrogen as a key element for future technologies and energy supplies is going to be produced. Green hydrogen can be used in industrial operations and manufacturing processes, but also for the transport transition and conversion to hydrogen powered vehicles. We see a very huge potential in the public transport and logistics systems. Finally, um, you will find the contact details of the contact persons here, whom you can also contact at any time afterwards if you have any questions. These are uh, Lord Mayor Richard Arnold, Alexander Kroll, Head of the Department for Economic Development, and Richard Neiser, Project Assistant. Now I thank you for your attention. Tisztelt Hölgyeim és Uraim, tisztelt megjelentek. Egy pici technikai problémával szembesültünk így. Distinguished ladies and gentlemen, we have, we have a slight hedge, technical hedge. Now we shall swap order and then may I invite Gabor Chete to deliver his presentation and then we hope to be able to give the floor to Mr. Smolinski from Opole. Tisztelt üdvözlök mindenkit. May I extend my heartfelt welcome to everyone here uh, in this ballroom and also to in the online space. I'd like to give you a momentum and then just I'd like to approach this area quite deeply and I'd like to be as short as possible. So I just cut these clippings and uh, and morphological pictures from Google Maps and you can see that this is Sekeshvahirvar and if you take a look at it you can see well it's surrounded by green areas there are mosaic like green spots here green areas green spaces but if you take a closer look of these cross sections well these are habitats and zones close to nature that are part of this fiber this urban fiber either directly or indirectly and these are under natural protection which is which are really very important to retain in respect of climate protection and for our own health as well so if you take an even closer look this is what we talk about today well then due due to the number of the global population of 8 billion and also the food chain well natural habitats disappear and here you can see agricultural uh, deserts and we we are surrounded by agricultural deserts and the natural environment is really disappearing so this homogeneous environment is gaining space and here you can see the mosaic like nature and this complex ecosystem and we have a lot to do now well we're just just outside the town in our agricultural area surrounding the town well this is where life really begins this is a very good chart because uh, what I wanted to show you in the previous slides, well, this is really a view of agriculture from an ecological point of view. Well, there are small allotment agriculture and also the species centered view and relating technologies and the introduction of all these well, at the moment, this is where we are, not only in Hungary, but all over Europe in many places. And the reason why we have homogeneous areas is really this. So we'd really like to make these uh, spots disappear. But Homo sapiens is a species that is trying to destroy what uh, they have built so far. So it's really very important for us to cultivate 
to smartly cultivate and retain these areas. So these are gardens of Eden, and they are just in the midst of uh, various habitats. We are part of these habitats. We are part of agriculture, but at the background you can see this homogeneous area, which is just not a monocultural this this, this is we, we can't speak of diversity so this is why it's very important for us to retain these ecological zones too to protect them and also to develop them this is really a very nice process for experts fundamentally uh, what uh, other opportunities do we have in addition to protecting these natural habitats? We need to come up with uh, technologies and uh, support system uh, that uh, are capable of uh, uh, supporting uh, these areas and are adjusted to these habitats, uh, including organic, organic uh, grassland management. You can uh, breed animals, you can graze animals. These areas are mowed twice a year with uh, proper principles. Uh, here you see a uh, type of mowing uh, with alerts. Uh, um, the uh, forest areas, which are around 60, uh, hectares around Sikesh uh, um, and keep growing. Uh, they are nice uh, uh, for uh, climate protection purposes, but they are not uh, the single and only solutions. Sikesh is located in flatland, and you see the type of areas that are connected to it. Uh, this is not a high mountain, high for a highly forested area. Uh, and you need to pay attention to various pillars because uh, one type of habitat will not necessarily be replaced by another. For instance, uh, uh, a marshland is never replaced by a forest. Um, so we need to be very meticulous and very considerate in planning. I don't want to give you a lot of detail. Let me show you uh, the protected ecological zones. What do they look like uh, from a bird's eye view or from closer? Here we have the Salin Lake, Shoshto. Uh, it is uh, in the context of the city, in the context of an urban requirement. Uh, it's a very diverse, uh, colorful, pulsating green area inside the city. A true green heart. I will not go down to species level, but all the pictures were taken um, in the area. If we pay proper attention uh, through planning and maintenance, uh, and we aim for maintaining the diversity of the flora and fauna of the area, we can uh, maintain a level of diversity that you see in the picture, but all of your efforts are needed to achieve that. These are in the outskirts, these are areas in the outskirts wedged between agricultural uh, uh, plots and land. I don't want to tell you all of the species. Uh, these are areas of 90 hectares, 18 hectares, uh, which are nature conservation zones uh, or natural zones, uh, which uh, we do not necessarily maintain as we do with uh, the Salin Lake of Shoshto, where there is also a study trail. Maria Moroi Maori Forest is also versatile and, uh, and diverse. And you see a forest uh, habitat which is extremely rare. It is one thousands uh, of the type of cohabitats that uh, uh, exist in forest. Uh, and uh, uh, these are reservation level uh, forests. Uh, and the areas left alone and the powers of nature 
are at play and only These are the areas and the related uh, uh, ecosystem species, uh, flora and fauna, will have to be reintroduced into nature. What am I talking about? These are uh, um, offhand examples uh, uh, located in Sekeshvahirvar. Uh, you need to create turf and grassland, uh, which are near nature, uh, it is an important duty. These are green surfaces in parkland, uh, providing uh, uh, an optics uh, which should be converted into a, main, a sustainable level so as uh, not to reflect uh, the consequences of climate change. And when we uh, select perennial plants, it is very important uh, uh, to, uh, to focus on the species. Uh, and if you select uh, the proper perennial plants, maintenance will be much easier along the year, and it will provide a glamorous vision to tourists. There are a few examples in Hungary, but it is important to operate uh, stormwater gardens uh, in Hungary. Uh, uh, these are services uh, that store sudden surges uh, of stormwater. This capture and retain the water, and this water can be used and uh, utilized. So these are habitats, uh, uh, which are near nature habitats, and you could, so you can plant them or leave them alone, and uh, uh, and function as a natural ecosystem. But. Uh, Design is key, and you have to think twice about where to locate this. This is a good example, the reconstruction of the Salin Lake of Sol Shosto. Uh, this, these images show you a um, um, more nature-friendly uh, picture. This is purified uh, sewage or wastewater, purified uh, Wastewater is a very important technology promoted by NGOs and uh, experts uh, uh, to politicians uh, so that we use these grey waters. Uh, uh, using um, the purified wastewater, you can maintain the water level of the Salin Lake of Shoshto. A hundred a hundred thousand cubic meters of water is used to maintain the thirty uh, uh, hectares. The uh, purified wastewater of Sikeshvahirvar alone per annum is 10 million, close to 10 million cubic meters. If we could use purified waters, discharges, uh, and create reservoirs or aquatic habitats uh, or maintain a nature friendly environment uh, in a broader uh, context, uh, we could then uh, uh, fight very uh, effectively against climate change. You, uh, other people and other speakers uh, have also mentioned green roofs. Uh, I'm talking about the green roof of IKEA next to Arkad in Budapest, a mall in Budapest. Uh, this is uh, a fantastic uh, experience. Uh, you also have guided tours there. And uh, you can, you will enjoy it if you visit uh, the roof of IKEA. This picture is not, not really good, uh, but it shows how important big trees are and what services, ecosystem services uh, they deliver. They cool, they capture noise and, and uh, dust uh, and particles. Uh, and these are called green utilities, uh, 
and inter-portfolio um, uh, communities regard these big trees as green utilities. Uh, and you can uh, experience uh, 30 degrees Celsius difference uh, between a city and its paved areas and the shade of a tree outside in the summer during a heat wave. I should mention a few words about protecting animals. We are uh, trying to protect uh, important species in the Hungarian fauna, species that are present in the city, in the environment, uh, uh, for instance, swallows. Due to climatic change and agriculture and the disappearance of habitats, uh, the number of swallows uh, has reduced. Uh, uh, they are very important in killing mosquitoes. Uh, they capture up to three, two to three kilograms of mosquitoes per season. It is very important to use artificial nests uh, to preserve their habitats. And in addition to uh, pr uh, providing protection for other birds and the migration of other birds, uh, we have a program with uh, uh, plants of nests and they are uh, utilized up to 100% capacity. And others are just uh, uh, options, various options as to how to protect uh, birds in your neighborhood. Uh, the first and foremost, there should be a healthy ecosystem. You should also uh, uh, protect pollinating uh, species. Uh, and the pollinating species uh, are exactly the ones that are attracted uh, by these pulsating green services inside the city, and thereby we will have uh, healthy populations of useful insects. So you can build special nests for them, breed boxes and so-called insect hotels. And of course, well, what I have shared with you, we are not only trying to take this direction, and we are not only trying to help the lives of these birds and insects, but during the past two years, we have introduced a lot of serious innovative methodologies. So. One is biological mosquito elimination, and it will uh, receive even higher attention. So we are not using any chemicals. We are not spreading the mosquitoes from airplanes, or we are not using lorries to spray uh, chemicals. and. Uh, and kill all the all the insects but we are using a super selective protein uh, extracting the ext extracted from bacteria that uh, affects the development of mosquito larvae so we have to identify the most infested areas and then we have to carry out occasional treatment and, the, and another very important direction is that we should not really spray chemicals on the foliage of large trees and pesticides. We should just uh, use targeted methodology, injections and inject the pesticide into the into the circulation system of trees, so we are using these methods now in Sekeshvairvar, and these are two very important ecological-based interventions with which we do hope that we can just reduce harmful processes. Why? Because of this. Uh, well, uh, the 50% of pollinating uh, insects became extinct. And if these pollinating insects and bees 
the number of them reduce is reduced so this is what a picnic will look like so we shall not have guatemala we are not going to be able to make uh, salsa we shall have no watermelon and uh, we, we shall end up with a lack of coffee so we have to think over the selection of these methodologies and also the detention and maintenance of natural habitats because nobody would really like to keep the habitats uh, alive like they do in China, so they use small brushes to fertilize uh, the trees in, in, in blossom. And another technology is the nanotechnology-based robots. Nobody would really like these robots to fly about in your environment to fertilize these plants. But we are close to this because, of course, this is a picture of a in of, of an existing process and what we have to we have to think about the direction we want to move in because at the moment and this is a water crisis and and this this is not sustainable this cannot be sustainable well it's 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 all right that that you that you really use uh, drinking water for irrigation and you create a golf course in your garden because it looks really very good and it looks green, but similarly to agricultural fields, this, this, these are homogeneous areas. So this, uh, these are, there are intensively cultivated uh, areas, but uh, there are and there are diverse uh, habitats. And in your garden, you can create a diverse environment, thus helping your environment. And uh, we are trying to establish bee meadows and uh, various other green spots in Sekeshvahirvar as, as a result of uh, thorough uh, development and, and, and uh, research, but you can establish a, a bee a meadow in the vicinity of a football field too. So the creation of green facades are very is, is very important and I don't know what the mayor would think about uh, buses with green roofs these are common in Spain and this is an example from Lokato should say in Sekeshvahirvar what a green facade could look like because green uh, Trees uh, have a good have a, have a very good insulation ins insulating effect and extensive green flat rooftops. Well, you can you can you can. This, these are very economic solutions, but of course you have to select the areas very carefully where you can put soil on the roof. Uh, so that structurally, structurally, it is bearable by the by by the by the building. So of course they can be complemented by solar panels as well. This is our goal. This is our objective in Switzerland and in Germany. There are uh, local municipal decrees about the establishment of such rooftops, and uh, why? do we insist on introducing nature to the town and why is this fool wants to cover bus rooftops with grass because well we really like our built infrastructure but here is the point what do we need we need food and we, we we, 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 we need nutrients. Without oxygen, man can stay uh, alive for one minute. Without water, one week. Without food, one month. But without oxygen, if there is no oxygen, there's no life. And you can, you can have uh, climate protection measures and you can, you can have infrastructure, but uh, men will cease to exist without oxygen. It will be very good for insects, and there are very, very important elements here. One is hemoglobin, which is a protein that carries oxygen to, to our cells, 
until our muscles and the nevusals use and utilize this oxygen. But what produces oxygen? Chlorophyll, plant chlorophyll. So this is how the, the rays of the sun are bound, and this is a key element to life on Earth, because without it we would not exist. So chlorophyll, and if you, if you take a look at the structure, well, uh, there's uh, just one central element, so iron and magnesium. This is, as, as Tomás Tromorja is old, said, uh, one of the founding members of uh, Green City Hungary, so it's not the green infrastructure that makes a town green, and it's not a smart city that makes a city green, but it is chlorophyll, because chlorophyll makes a city green and livable, because without chlorophyll, we may not stay alive. So I join Jolt in saying that we should really make efforts when we develop our green infrastructure, green urban infrastructure, to introduce as much chlorophyll as possible, because this will make our lives a lot better. Thank you very much. Ladies and gentlemen, we thank Gabor Chete for the presentation, and it seems our efforts uh, have been crowned with success, and we have uh, uh, Mr. Smolensky uh, waiting for My name is Sebastian Smolensky, I'm representing the city of Opola, um, and I would like to tell you about our actions uh, with animals at the green fields of uh, Opole. Um, as you can see, the title of our presentation is Animals Protection Equipment in the Greenfield Sites of Opole. And you may think why this topic, uh, we think it's very important for us uh, that the um, animals are the main issue in uh, city um, habitat not just the plants but also the, the animals and because the um, climate change refers to everything including animals um, we have to um, make many uh, important actions just to help them to uh, live in our city inhabitant and as you can see on my presentation Opola is also a green city accord member so it's uh, it's uh, just a good topic uh, for your conference. Mm. Something about our uh, Greenlands of Opole. Mm. We have in Opole three uh, conservation zones. Uh, one of them is uh, Grudziski Grand Forest. It's the last um, Odra River Valley forest, uh, which we have to uh, protect. Um, many actions about this uh, forest cannot be taken uh, such as uh, we do not cut the trees in, in this forest um, way up by collapse we just uh, let them stay there and, and rot for another animals um, the second conservation zone in Apollo is uh, the meadows of NWK, which is a uh, name of a, um, a city uh, suburb. Um, as you can see, there are many uh, checkpoints, there are education timetables, so uh, many students can, uh, or, or inhabitants of our city, can uh, go there and, and uh, let something knowledge about uh, this uh, this zone. Mm. Last of this of our conservation zone is a stone pit called Piast. Mm. It was the um, old mining uh, stone pit. Um, after the flood, it was uh, filled with water, and it's not just a geological 
um, conservation zone uh, and it is the most important um, thing about this, this zone is that it is a, a habitat of many water birds uh, so uh, in this uh, occasion it has to be protected mm. something about our trees in Opole there are 30 trees uh, uh, that needs to be uh, protected. The oldest tree uh, in Opola is the, the lime in Latin, Tilia cordata. Uh, it's the, um, uh, his circuit is 600 centimeters. We think it's about 600 years old. The main issue of this tree is that uh, during the storm, the main branches of this uh, tree was broken, mm, so we have to, the lower branches uh, has to be stood up. But this construction, as you can see on the on the slide, Greenlands of Opole, almost uh, uh, 2,000 hectares in total, but not all the um, Greenlands are the property of the city. There are 140 hectares of Greenlands. Uh, which is the property of the city. Uh, uh, 150 hectares of Lane Greenlands, which is also the property of the city. Uh, uh, 20 hectares of municipal forest. Uh, and the rest is the, the, the tribal, private property. Here are some photos of our Greenlands, just like you can see. Mm, during the, the presentation and the topic about animals, uh, the, the, mm, we think the most important thing about uh, animals in the city habitat is that we have to uh, help them. We think that the animals uh, were the first inhabitants of these lands. Uh, we are the guests of this this, this uh, land, so we have to protect them and we have to help them. Uh, and uh, to do that, we have a contractor. It's a, it's a, uh, a veterinary uh, doctor uh, who is on this on this job 24 hours for seven. And uh, when we need uh, his uh, help, uh, he's just arriving and helping. Um, the animals. Uh, the main problem is uh, car collisions and with uh, deers or, or hawks. Uh, all kinds of animals are in our city, so every day there's, there's a, this situation that we have to use our veterinary to help them. Uh, about our infrastructure with the, the Greenlands, um, about our equipment for, for uh, animals, uh, it's maybe not uh, uh, such a big thing with the bird breeding boxes, but we have about 800 pieces of them in the whole city. We have them in the, the parks or also on, on the buildings. Uh, for many, many um, species of birds, from the small birds, also for the predators like uh, hawks. Um, we think that uh, every year we have to clean them and uh, about 80% uh, population is inhabited in, in these uh, boxes. Mm. But breeding boxes, uh, we are very proud of this, uh, this action. Um, most of the people are scared of uh, bats. We don't uh, scare of them, we love them. So we have to help them. And we put about 150 um, uh, bat breeding boxes in our forest. Uh, so just to uh, help them to breed and, and to uh, sleep in the winter. Uh, water holes and feeders for the birds. Uh, almost every hour Greenland is, uh, has to uh, have uh, water holes and feeders. Um, as you know, uh, 
climate change refers to also the highest temperature in, in the city. So just to ensure that the birds are uh, can drink and can uh, find the food, uh, we put those uh, equipment in our lands just to help them um, to stay in the city. Hedgehog shelters. Um, almost uh, every park in the city has um, these hedgehog shelters. Um, and uh, as you can see, there are education tables, not to, uh, just to, to inform the citizens that uh, it's, it's, it's a special place for the hedgehogs and um, do not disturb them. We are sleeping in the winter, so it's important just for the children to know about that. Flower beds for bees. Um, our moths are not uh, um, alone every every month. We just let the the, the grass to uh, make flower beds, just just for for insects or, or bees. Um, and it's uh, also important just um, for education of the citizens. Uh, many many education tables are there and. Uh, it's not just uh, aesthetical uh, experience. It, it just it, uh, it is important for the for the bees, for the butterflies, and um, many other insects. Mm. They are Greenlands um, when the, where we have to mow the lawn, uh, so we put their uh, insect hotels. Mm. It, the same effect as, as the, the previous slide, protecting and breeding uh, insects. Mm, Square shelters. Uh, in our city, uh, old trees are inhabited by the squares, but uh, as we can see, there are mm, many trees that have uh, not enough space for all the, uh, for the squares. So, uh, uh, we put this, this shelters among our parks. Um, it is a, a project that we didn't have to uh, check. We will check it um, this autumn and we will see if the place is good for them. And if it was, we will uh, uh, put the more shelters uh, on our, in our parks. Uh, white skull shelters. Um, it's, it's important uh, not only to, to give the shelter in, in our uh, city, but uh, many organization is founding by us uh, just to uh, feed them, just to uh, uh, help them and to sterilize them. Uh, so the population for wild cats will be not too big for our, our, our city. Mm. Oh, I think that's that's the end of my presentation. Uh, thank you for your attention. I'm waiting for the questions. And once again, I'm terribly sorry uh, for my technical problems. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you very much, Mr. Smolensky, for, for his presentation. And I would like to express my thanks to every one of our speakers for their high quality and excellent presentations. And now there is an opportunity, as I have mentioned earlier, uh, now, we, now we have the opportunity to address our Hungarian speakers with questions, those who were here in the ballroom with us. So about the climate strategy or the or the lungs of Fehervar program or uh, pertaining to ecological programs, and we have uh, three Hungarian speakers. Is there anyone who would like to ask questions? If there is, so there's a gentleman here. So there will be a flying mic going round, and we shall pass it to the speaker. I'm Dr. Andras Bednar. I'm a local citizen 
with the TZMA group, we have started a project. We have launched a project, and the mayor and the vice mayor, the deputy mayor, are supporting us, and there will be a very important, we shall take a very important, we shall play a very important role in the local climate-related uh, issues. So climate, climate change is global, and the solutions are local, so we have developed an electric car, and we'd like to manufacture it here. So did you think of uh, the renovation of architectural memorials? They cannot be, be equipped with a 15 centimeter thick insulation, polystyrol, or various other insula insulation materials but if 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 they do if they are not insulated then they will not be very economical to run so we have a hungarian invention and you need only 1 mm thickness of that so thank you i'd like to thank for the for the organizers because and I'd like to address the young participants. Now, climate is yours now. Tom, Wait, Tom Waits has a very beautiful song. So all the world is green. So this is what I wish to everyone. And I'd like to express my thanks for allowing me to participate in this conference. Thank you very much. So are there any more questions? Yes, there's a gentleman there, raising his hand. I'm Istvan Bolshoi, and the reason why I am speaking now, I have other opportunities to express my opinions. So as a compliment to the presentations, it's really very important uh, to harmonize these issues with the general development plans of the city. So one of the decisive elements of the climate, of the urban climate, is really the environment of the city. Because just within the walls of the town, in urban areas, we cannot really do too much about the climate change. We have to address this issue to get together with the natural environment. So there's the Moor Gorge, for instance. So the prevalent wind is a westerly wind, and there's a motorway, and also uh, it is planned that there will be a motorway constructed there and also a main railway line. So we must pay attention to that. And karst water, Feyre-Turgo, is a great value in the vicinity of Székesfehérvár. So I agree on what I heard with uh, treated sewage water, the so-called gray water. So, but there's also another um, methodology in uh, agriculture and also the use of wastewater sludge we have to introduce that too, so uh, new methodologies must be used in the vicinity of Székesfehérvár too. And it's very important among the urban measures that we should really use track the, 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 the opportunities provided by track-bound transport. So Székesfehérvár is really a very important transport hub Earlier, there was only one passenger in every car, and so track-bound transportation should be introduced, connected to the national railway network in Székesfehérvár. And finally, I think as for energy problems, mention is being made on Hungary's oil importation, and Hungary is criticized for that. So 
on the roofs of buildings in housing estates built from prefabricated slabs, concrete elements, green rooftops could be established and small power stations could be placed on these rooftops, solar stations, to replace gas heating. And I was an active employee when there was a gas factory fueled by oil and district heating. And oil was used for district heating. And when it comes to district heating, we have to think of replacement material. And this is my contribution to the climate protection actions taken by the town, which must be harmonized with national plans. Thank you really very much. So are there any more questions uh, to the speakers? Yes, there is one. Another question. I'd like to address my question to Laszlo Magyar, who mentioned that by 2030, the city of Székesfehérvár will reduce glasshouse gas emission uh, by 30 percent and uh, compared to which year? So 2019 is the so-called base year. And so the uh, sustainable uh, climate action plan can contains even a higher percentage of reduction by 2030. And this is necessary because by 2050, Hungary wishes to be climate neutral. This is a very ambitious goal, but uh, measures do not support, or current measures do not support the fulfillment of this uh, of this goal. So this is what we can, uh, this is what the, what the town of Sikeshwayar can undertake now, and this is why it is part of the climate strategy. But I think it should be a higher percentage, and it would be to my pleasure if it was. So there's another speaker, another person who would like to ask a question. So this young man in blue shirt. So I have a question. I'm not addressing it to any specific speaker. What I'd like to highlight is that we students, we, if we have a suggestion, if we have a, if we have a recommendation to climate policies, then what are the forums that we can use in order to articulate our opinions? Well, as for climate strategy, there's a platform which is live now, and here you can see the appearance. So this is Let's Act Together 2030.hu, and this is the official website of the climate strategy. It's not public. It hasn't been made public yet. It went alive some time ago. So this is Let's Act Together 2030.hu, and there you can see questionnaires and data sheets, uh, and you can ask questions and you can make recommendations. So what I recommend now, you should just uh, go to this website and we welcome various remarks and thoughts and ideas. Uh, because we can only act. Uh, there's another person wanting to ask a question or wanting to make a remark. Gabor Vorgo is my name, and I'm representing an NGO. So this has been a very great conference. And I'd like to make three rem remarks. One is that uh, water retention in the vicinity of town, well, should really be addressed more and more efficiently. And I do hope that there will be resources for such projects. And so, and also what Gabor Chete said, that the use of treated sewage water and, and, and also what one of my colleagues said about uh, new ways of agricultural cultivation are essential issues. So 
treated sewage water should really be used, at least partially, in the environment. And one of my teachers used to say that uh, it's easy to plow a meadow, but what do you do afterwards? So I think, uh, as for the presentation entitled The Lung, the lungs of the green lungs of Székesfehérvár. So is there a scheduling for the implementation of this project? So when will this biologically active area that uh, absorbs CO2 and when will it be replaced by forests that will produce oxygen. So I, I think this is a very important issue to me. And the third thing I'd like to recommend or suggest is in Fehirvar, there's 12 metric tons of green waste in various waste depots. This waste is this waste is uh, from gardens, and this should be composted like it is done in the western part of the world. So, would really like to make composting more intensive, and the municipality should promote composting. Thank you very much. And finally, is there anyone still who would like to make a remark or ask a question? So, no. So, thank you very much for your activity. And as Chittagabur also said, so this is a very important web page. Let's act together 2030.hu. So, if uh, anybody has a question to the online speakers, then uh, then you can upload your questions to this web page. So this has brought us to the end of our conference. Uh, I'd like to express my thanks to the speakers who delivered their presentations alive. And uh, may I kindly invite uh, Mr. Jort Lerner, Deputy Mayor, to give a small gift to our speakers. Distinguished ladies and gentlemen, thank you very much. And please leave your headsets at the registration desk and please help our work now by filling in the five question questionnaire. And also please sign your contribution declaration and place them in your bo in the boxes at the reception desk. And may I call your attention to the fact that uh, the presentations in Hungarian and in English will be available on the municipal YouTube channel too. And this is the title of uh, the identification number of this project. And thanks to that project, we could organize this uh, uh, conference. And thank you very much for your active participations and see you on another occasion.